What's going on guys, Sticks here with the Token Minorities bringing you the semi-final battle for Season 2 of the UBL and we have a rematch against CJ and his Baltimore Oriolus and before I get into the team, just a reminder that if you guys like this video please leave a like, drop a comment, click that subscribe button, helps us out a ton and lets us do more cool stuff for you guys. So anyway, on to the team, like I said we are up against CJ and it's kind of funny of the teams that are left in the playoffs, there is myself, obviously, CJ, Uzi, and A-Drive. And throughout the course of the season, we've actually beaten every single one of these opponents at one point or another. Like, we played all three of them and beat all three of them in pretty convincing fashion, all except for Uzi. Uzi was a close game, but we still managed to have control of it the entire time and still pull out a and still pull out the 2-0. So, I feel pretty good about the matchups for the rest of the playoffs, but that being said, going up against CJ, he's a very good player, so I don't want to overlook anything. Now, the team that I brought against him the first time was very similar to this one. In fact, some of the sets I'm using are actually exactly the same, but I still wanted to change up a few things here and there so that I could better deal with what he could potentially bring and also have a different win con. And in the first matchup, you might notice that Porygon Z did a ton of work. So I'm expecting him to have better prep for the Porygon Z this time around, but still it's just too good for me not to bring it. So Porygon Z is going to be the main breaker of this team, but the main sweeper is going to be the Mew that you have in front of you. So I'm going to go even a little bit quicker than normal just because I already explained a lot of the thought process that went into my first team, and it's very similar for this one. Mew, I changed from a Scarf to a Wise Glasses Nasty Plot set because looking at his team, this Mew can absolutely sweep. So my goal in this matchup is to get up hazards, pressure him, and put everything in range of Mew. Just let it nasty plot up and then vacuum wave takes out his faster stuff like heliolisk lopunny and sneasel all of them are hit super effectively by vacuum wave and at plus two with wise glasses if i have sufficient hazards up that should be a very quick gg meanwhile psychic takes care of the rest of his team and dark pulse i opted for dark pulse over earth power just because heatran i mean i literally have ground coverage on every single other mon on my team so i really wasn't necessarily worried about chipping down Heatran like Heatran has to be Shuka in this matchup like he absolutely has to be otherwise I don't know like otherwise I just sweep him a little bit too easily with some of the mons I mean like Aerodactyl can outspeed even a scarf set and Scolipede he has a lot of trouble dealing with in general so Heatran 1 billion percent expecting to be Shuka and that being said it's easier to chip down Heatran if it is Shuka and everything else on my team will pop the Shuka Berry anyway. So yeah, that's why I opted for Dark Pulse just for a heavier hit on the Necrozma. The speed is enough to guarantee to outspeed Venomoth and then I maxed out my special attack through the rest into HP and maximized my EVs. I decided to put one more in defense as opposed to HP just because that would have increased the Stealth Rock damage by one and so I was like, eh, it'll probably not make too big of a difference but might as well go for that. Seismitoad is basically the exact same set as last time, just defensive with rocks, although I switched Toxic for Scald, just to try to chip down things like Necrozma and Togekiss, Aerodactyl, same exact set, just added a little bit more speed for Scarf, what was it? It was Scarf Diggersby, I believe I decided to creep this time, okay, I hate you iTunes, go away, uh, <laughs> I decided to creep Scarf Diggersby at this point as opposed to just scarf heatran because i like the bulk on aerodactyl i don't necessarily need the extra attack because like i said i am going for more of a hazards chip than just kind of sweeping like i did last time scolipede i changed the set from a an offensive life orb set to a bulkier still relatively offensive spike set so this set um, works as both a spiker, a potentially bulky spiker if I need it, because, I mean, like like I said, I'm going for more the hazard stacking route. But at the same time, if spikes don't look like they're necessary in this matchup, I still have a good amount of attack in order to be able to put a huge dent in his team, like to dent things sufficiently. And yeah, Scolipede is rather weak. I mean, it's base 100 attack, which isn't the greatest. But with the combination of moves that I do have, I should be able to hit his team relatively hard enough to break through for different mods on my team just to where I am able to win eventually. The speed, 
I don't remember exactly what it was for. I think it was like speed creeping something, speed creeping me, speed creeping Venomoth or something to that effect. I mean, the, the 160 is there for a reason. And then I maxed out my HP so that I could have the most opportunity to set up spikes and threw the rest into attack so that I could hit pretty hard. Next up, we have a Magmortar, and this is a completely different Mon than I brought last time. Last time I brought a Decidueye for the Breloom, but considering he saw how easily prepped I was for Breloom, I was thinking that he wasn't going to bring it this time, and the team that I brought last time was decimated by Venomoth, and so Magmortar is just a nice immediate stop to Venomoth. Just be like, okay, I can switch in, you can't sleep powder me, I can take your Z-move, and I can blow you away. And then also Priority Mock Punch is very nice against him. Hidden Power Grass and Earthquake are for coverage on the rest of his team. Hidden Power Grass for the Quagsire, obviously. Earthquake for the Heatran. The speed is enough for, I believe, Bulky Tran... I think it was Modest Tran, actually. I think the speed... Was that enough for my... Yeah, I think it was enough for Modest Tran. Uh, the special attack was a jump point for damage on Quagsire with HP Grass. The Spideff was enough to guarantee live plus two Z Sludge Bomb from Venomoth. Not after rocks, just in general. And then I maxed it through the rest into attack to hit as hard as possible, like Flare Blitz, Mock Punch, etc. And finally, we have a Porygon Z. This time I'm opting for a... Life Orb set over a Silk Scarf set just for the extra damage. I mean, Tri-Attack demolishes stuff, but I like that Life Orb gives me a little bit extra damage on uh, Ice Beam and HP Ground. I opted for Ice Beam in this situation because he saw that he does not have anything to switch into Porygon Z. The two things that he has that are most likely to be Chillin' Berry, because I'm thinking Chillin' Berry is a nice way of trying to take on Porygon Z, are going to be either the Drudagon or the Togekiss, because Quagsire still just gets absolutely blown away, and it also kind of needs leftovers in order to take on, like, Scolipede and other mods on my team. And then also his Necrozma, if I... If it's Chillin' Berry, then it doesn't hit as hard or it doesn't take hits as well. So basically, I'm thinking that Togekiss and Drudagon are going to be his Porygon Z answers. Ice Beam is just a nice way of being like, yeah, let's just avoid that Chillin' Berry and smack you. And if he has Yachi Berry, well, I tip my hat to him. The speed is enough for... The speed is enough for... I think it was Venomoth creeping... Venomoth creeping something on my team. I am so... I think it was Venomoth creeping Magmortar, potentially. And then I maxed out my special attack, and oddly enough, my HP actually hits a life orb number in general. So yeah, that is the team, and let's just go ahead and hop right on over to the battle. Alrighty, so here we are in the battle, and the first thing I'm noticing is that there is no Quagsire, and there is a Heliolisk, so that screams to me that Togekiss is going to be his Scolipede answer. Because, I mean, he knows how big of a threat Scolipede is to his team. Because, I mean, Sol Scolipede can potentially 6-0. So immediately, I'm able to tell that the Togekiss, right off the bat, is going to be a defensive Kebia set. I mean, if it's not, then I absolutely sweep him with Scolipede, which is nice. But I'm thinking, like, CJ Smart, he knows what he needs to bring. Togekiss is 100% going to be defensive Kebia. Heatran... He doesn't have a switch into my Porygon Z otherwise, so even though he brought Shuka last time, I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be Shuka again. Necrozma could just be a mixed offensive set, or I mean, it, it feels like a feels like he'd bring more of an offensive Necrozma. I mean, it could be bulky as well, but I'm thinking he'll want to hit my team hard. Like, Necrozma will be more geared towards attacking than being a defensive wall. Heliolisk, 1 billion percent going to be Scarfed. I mean, if he's not Scarfed, I will be shocked, but I'm thinking he's going to be Scarfed. Sneasel, I'm thinking that one that he's probably going to be Banded again, but a Life Orb set is just as likely, same with an Eviolite set. But anyway, it's going to be an offensive set, and Megalop is going to be offensive again, like, just because that's what Megalop does. So, seeing his team, I'm immediately going to try to get up rocks, as I get up rocks on basically everything, and if he leads... Uh, he leaves with his Heliolisk, I can protect to scout out to see if he's going to go immediately for the HP Grass. So yeah, let's just hop right on into it. So like I said, Sazpatode's lead of choice, just get up rocks, scout out whatever he wants to do, etc, etc. As he does end up leading with his Necrozma, and I'm actually starting to recognize his nicknames at this point, so that's kind of funny. But I mean, I know that I can take whatever hit Necrozma wants to go for because my special defense does allow me to take, I believe it's... Two, it's in it's in my favor to live two max special attack photon geysers as he just goes for the photon geyser that does a good chunk i mean it doesn't really tell me whether this, this necrozma is going to be physical or special and i'm going to fire off a toxic immediately because i know that more than likely i'll be able to take two hits from this necrozma i mean unless it's like a life orb or a specs like grass set 
but either way, able to get off the Toxic, get extra chip, and now I'm going to go for my rocks. As Necrozma's Toxic, he goes into his Togekiss that is annoying but fine, and I'm thinking that since he brought Togekiss in on my Seismitoad immediately, he's going to try to heal Bell off, so I'm just going to try to fire off another Toxic to get this Togekiss worn down as he goes for the Air Slash, and I'm hoping if I can get the Toxic off, that's amazing, but no, he flinches. I mean, it is in his favor, but I mean, still doesn't mean it's any less annoying when it does happen, but I mean, I can't call hacks on that because it is in his favor, like I said. So now I'm going to go into my Magmortar as because he doesn't have the Venom off, Magmortar doesn't serve too much of a purpose purpose i mean it's still nice but it's not like absolutely necessary and i'm gonna fire off a flare blitz see what type of togekiss this is as it does turn out to be a defensive i don't believe that's max defense i mean it was close to max defense togekiss and that just confirms that okay he's a kebia kiss like he absolutely has to be like there's no reason that you would run a defensive kiss without Kebia when I have a Scolipede. So thinking that he's just going to go for another Air Slash, I'm going to pull the switch into my PZ as, I mean, if he wants to go for the Air Slash, I can threaten it out as this is not a special defense kiss, and then Tri Attack or Ice Beam can absolutely just, well, just demolish him. But because I'm thinking that, okay, I know this is probably Kebia, but Ice Beam might throw off the calc just enough to where he thinks he can live a tri attack. So I'm going to go for that as he switches into his Heatran and his wish comes true. So, I mean, that's not a huge deal. I will be able to take whatever hit this Heatran wants to go for. Even a modest, like, Scar Fire Blast will not be able to knock me out or it has to get an absolutely max roll to knock me out. So I'm going to pop a Shukaberry and... At this point, I was like, okay, I popped a Shukaberry, I'll be able to do it KO him. This is a special defense Heatran. I saw a Lava Plume, and I looked over and calped. It was like, okay, I'll just probably knock him out this next turn. And then when I looked back, I no longer had a Porygon Z. And I was like, wait, where'd Porygon Z go? Um, well, that was a crit, and not only was it a crit, it was a max roll crit. So, yeah, that really, really sucks. Like, he needed the top three rolls with his investment to knock my Porygon Z out from that range. So because of that, Porygon Z is dead. And not only that, I can't get the switch. I... Okay, so what I would have gotten was the initiative. If I had knocked out the Heatran, he would have had to switch in something to my Porygon Z. But instead, I have to switch Aerodactyl in to revenge kill this Heatran. So now he gets the switch advantage, which ends up being his Heliolisk. And I'm just like, ah, oh, crap. Well, this sucks, so I'm going to withdraw my Aerodactyl and just go straight into my Magmortar. If he wants to go for a T-Bolt, this is just kind of a scouting slash sacking play, as no matter what he wanted to go for, Magmortar was kind of... Magmortar was okay. Magmortar was expendable. So Heliolisk is just going to U-turn out. I thought of going into Seismitoad, but I figured he might just try to predict early on. Like, he might try to over-predict, and I didn't want Seismitoad to just get knocked out. But had I gone into that on the U-turn, then I would have gotten Rocky Helmet damage off, and that would have put it even closer in range of plus two Mew. So he's going to go into his Mega Low Punny. I'm thinking he's just going to knock me out. So I'm just going to get some solid damage with Mach Punch, as he does reveal the substitute. And I was like, oh... Well, that's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. I just have to not get paralyzed, and I do. So, yeah, he's going to have Lopunny behind a sub, and this is going to kill me because, I mean, I'm a lonely Magmortar. Magmortar does not have very good defense anyway, and especially with the lonely nature, Lopunny is going to heal up very nicely. So, yeah, now this Lopunny is behind a sub, and this is, this is honestly just looking really, really bad for me. And the max roll crit into the full para gives him so much momentum because now I can go Aerodactyl and yeah, I can live whatever hit, but Mega Lop has the option of Drain Punching to get himself out of range of Mew where it would not have been otherwise, but instead he's able to Baton Pass and he ends up getting a free switch into his Heliolisk. Now keep in mind, in both instances, Heliolisk should have a little bit more damage on it because of, well, Porygon Z, I mean, like, I would have had to switch out anyway, but like in that instance, he should have had no safe switch in, like, so I would have gotten damage off, wing attack damage on the Porygon Z or the Necrozma. But luckily, I do get the switch right with my Seismitoad, and I'm just going to fire off a Toxic once again. If he goes into Necrozma, well, I mean, Earthquake could have done a decent damage, but not, like, not amazing damage. Uh, but he goes into his Togekiss, and this is great for me because, okay, the Togekiss is now poisoned. He has Air Slash, Thunder Wave, Wish. I'm thinking that his last move is Protect. And so, at this point... I'm imagining that he's going to just try to wish up and protect on my Seismitoad. Either way, I don't have a move to hit 
his Togekiss with, and I could have gone to Mew. I could have gone to Mew, but I really thought that like Mew needs to be at high a health as possible to have the opportunity to set up and win the game. So I didn't even want to risk him potentially even Thunder Waving on the Switch. And I went to Scolipede because at this range, I need all but like basically I just can't get low rolled and I get low rolled and Togekiss is going to be able to live with the Kebia like I predicted and he's not quite able to knock me out but uh, that just that really sucks so I didn't want to go into Mew because I didn't want to risk an air slash or T wave on the switch so Scolipede like if it went down wasn't a huge deal but if like, I didn't even think of the defog, so now I don't even have the damage that I need on Sneasel or the Heliolus because my rocks are gone, and he's able to just go immediately into his Sneasel and revenge kill my Scolipede, as opposed to having to go out into his Necrozma, which, actually, fun fact, would have uh, would have won me the game. So I'm going to go into my size potato. I'm thinking that this is banded like he brought it last time. And if it's not, then I know that I have to go into my Aerodactyl in order to get sufficient damage off for Mew to potentially kill, as Eviolite does have a better chance to live than just a regular, than just a regular attacking version. So, I mean, that play right there, if he was a banded Weavile, or Sneasel, sorry, I probably said Weavile a couple times, if he was a banded Sneasel, I was able, I would be able to get my rocks back up. If he wasn't, then I got the information that I needed for Aerodactyl to try to come back in, or for Aerodactyl to come in, get damage off, and then Mew potentially to sweep in the late game. Like, I need a lot of things to go my way at this point, just because, I mean, the max roll crit, the full para, and the, well, and the absolute, or not absolute min, but I mean, I, I got min rolled with Scolipede against his Togekiss, and so Heliolisk is now going to be able to go for the Dark Pulse, and I knew he had Dark Pulse. I was like, maybe Thunderbolt, and it won't be able to do it KO, but nah, he has Dark Pulse. So, yeah, Mew has to, Mew has to live two of these somehow, or I need to, because I mean, I'm not going to knock out Necrozma if he's a max HP variant from this range. So luckily, I don't get flinched. I go for a Nasty Plot. And I need an absolute max roll on this Helios. Sorry, this game is very, very fast-paced. I'll explain all my thoughts later in the game. But I need absolute max. Of course I don't get it. And he is going to be able to knock me out with the Dark Pulse. And we will lose the game in one of the most unfortunate ways possible. So, yeah, I mean, that just... That, that, that really sucked. So, <laughs> I mean, plain and simple... I feel like I had a good enough game plan to win the game, and I feel like the mods that I brought were sufficient in winning the game. But, I mean, the max roll crit, the full para, the low roll on Togekiss, like, all of those just kind of added up in the end to where there wasn't much that I could do um, overall. Because, I mean, had Scolipede not gotten... I mean, even with the max roll crit and the full para, I still had the chance to win. Because if Scolipede didn't get if Scolipede did not get um whatchamacallit what am I trying to say if Scolipede did not get hit by the Togekiss like if I didn't mineral the Togekiss and he wasn't able to get that hit off well suddenly Scolipede's at full health he has to go into his Necrozma I'm able to pop his Tangaberry he was Tangaberry with my Z move and that put it sufficiently in Mew range to be able to revenge it and potentially win the game from there, like set up on it and potentially win the game where I still have Aerodactyl and Seismitoad in the back to prevent Heliolisk from locking into like Thunderbolt. It's Seismitoad prevents it from locking into Thunderbolt and Aerodactyl even then can live a Thunderbolt from full health. So yeah, I mean, that was just all sorts of unfortunate, but down to the end, I still had a chance to win. That just mineral on the Togekiss was the final nail in the coffin. I mean, had I had Porygon Z, I think that would have been completely different as it outsped the Togekiss and the Necrozma and forced a KO every single time it came in. Also, not having the low punny behind a sub would have forced something different in. He would have been, wouldn't have been able to get Switch Initiative off of that like he did with Baton Pass. And so, I mean, like, yeah, that was just... Just all sorts of unfortunate. I mean, when the hacks goes that significantly against you, there's really nothing you can do but laugh. So, yeah, good game, CJ. Kind of wish that the...
game didn't come down to hacks like it did, but good luck in finals. Win it for me so I don't feel as bad about it, but thank you guys so much for watching and following me this entire season. It was a ton of fun, but at the same time, I realized that I hate Wi-Fi just because I really like the ability to see the rolls. I like to visualize what type of damage I'm getting. Like, I don't want to have to be like, well, that looks about like 40%-ish. Like, that's, that's, that seems about right. I like to be able to have better numbers and not have to buy a capture card and then install that HP bar up the top. So, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be doing another Wi-Fi League for a while. But nonetheless, this was fun. Thank you to the UBL guys for having me. And this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.